Uh, first of all, thank you uh, for coming. Uh, my fellow cohort members, uh, cohort 14, professors, Dr. Hagbert, and thank you, Gyanu and Pushpa, because I'm going to use you two as examples in my presentation. Um, so, the ultimate presentation, I interned at Habitat for Humanity in Richmond, Kentucky, um, and I've titled it Giving a Home to Humanity, because that's what Habitat does. So who am I? I'm Lakshmi Bharadwaj. It's a picture from last summer. We went rock climbing, if you guys remember, if my cohort that members remember. So that was in Wolf County, Kentucky. I used that picture to depict how my last summer was full of action and learning and uh, learning on the fly. Um, my hometown is Patna, India. It's around about 6 million people. And I'm going to uh, talk about how I connected my internship and thought about the perspective that comes from being from a town of 6 million people and a country like India. Um, my major is econ and political science, and I'm all about political economy. And I'm going to connect all my uh, slides and learnings and EPG abilities to how I'm going to turn that into a successful experience that goes on to building more into political economy. I'm a junior. Mm. So my internship search. <clears throat> so Ben, uh, who, who's a cohort 13 member, is uh, really close to me. Ben and I uh, are, are in the martial arts club at, at Berea College. And um, we were in the same team in our cohort 13. And Ben worked on a model of, um, of a variable device, a variable tech. So Ben and I worked on that for quite a bit. And uh, through his contacts in Berea, now said Berea, Ben gave me the contact of Mr. Russ Barclay, who is the uh, director of uh, HFH at Richmond, Kentucky. And through Ben, through that contact, I emailed him uh, with the project proposal. And, and thus, I got the internship. Uh, some challenges were like some doing the internship search. I applied to a bunch of places. I heard positively from EKU, the economics department, and my advisor, Dr. Vazana, told me that she'd connect me with, an, with a research program at um, Purdue University. So I stopped doing research and this field work. So uh, I went with field work for now because I wanted to get a basic experience of how housing problems are a part of political economy uh, domestically and internationally. Um, I had a few goals that I had in mind before I settled on this internship. Those goals were to learn basics of office management, to increase my understanding of housing problems, uh, to learn the role of incentives in uh, why people choose certain amenities and why people choose to skip over certain amenities, and to acquire advocacy and awareness skills. And I will uh, make clear how I use those advocacy skills to um, make better use of my role as an intern and to make better use of what I learned at APG as a cohort 13 member. So about Habitat for Humanity, <clears throat> what Habitat is, is it's, so it's a, it's a low-cost co low housing provider, which is non-profit. So Habitat provides housing uh, to low-income group people, and they also undertake low-cost housing repairs. They also sell low-cost furniture and other housing material, and in some cases provide disaster relief. They don't find much work in disaster relief in, in the U.S. So they have not found much work in the past few uh, months, well, uh, until recently with, with the hurricanes. But they do a lot of work in about 70 countries which are um, vulnerable to disasters. So how Habitat works is they invite applications. And only about 4% of those applications are shortlisted for interview. So the factors that they use in the selection are factors like income. You have to have a certain income by which they can be assured that you will pay their mortgage over a 20-year period. It's a 0% interest mortgage, but then you have to pay it back. So it's not free housing. It is uh, subsidized housing, and they want you to pay for it for this, but they will give you a 20-year period, and this, uh, the, the cost is lower than market pricing. Also, um, they take applications for housing repairs. So if you are unable to provide um, funds, or if you are unable to pay for a regular market price um, repair, you can apply to Habitat, and then they can provide uh, cheap, housing, cheap housing repairs for you. So now. What they build on is a huge volunteer network. They have schools coming down from states like Washington and uh, um, Michigan. They have, they have high schools and colleges that come down with volunteer groups, and they help them build houses. Also, when you commit to being a homeowner, when you apply, you get selected. When you commit to being a homeowner, you have to commit to sweat equity hours. So the condition is you pay, uh, you pay less than the market price, but then you have to given about 360 hours that you spend working on either your house or another Habitat project. And this picture depicts the number of homes Habitat built in, ha has built in the past few years. 
in Madison County, Madison and Clark counties. So what I did there, what my role was, this is me volunteering for the Habitat Restore. It may look like I was volunteering for, a, for the Walking Dead shooting, um, but it's not, I promise. It was, it's an EKU dorm, not to say EKU is like, anyway. So, <laughs> so the Habitat Restore, so I was volunteering session, it was one day out of those eight weeks when we had to actually move stuff, move furniture, like big dressers and chairs and up and down eight floors. So that was a very tiring day and that was, that was, um, so that was a highlight of my role. That was a, that was a point where I was like, okay, uh, what can this teach me? But then later I will clarify what that taught me ultimately. So I was one of the three interns at Habitat. All three were from Berea College. Um, I did some office work there. I managed their, do their database for donors. So they had quite a few donors um, who they sent mail to. And in doing this, uh, they had a huge database which had not been cleaned up for about 10 months. And that's where they were sending mail to people who had either moved or were not at that address anymore. <clears throat> so cleaning the database saved the organization a lot of costs that they had in sending mail. Uh, also, it cleaned up their management and it uh, made the database more efficient. We had a lot of field visits. For example, when Habitat builds houses and, or rebuilds them, they have home dedication ceremonies. They dedicate houses to the homeowners, they bring in people from, a, from um, eclectic sources and then they um, combine and pull, on, pull these resources together to uh, dedicate their home to the homeowner who has gone through certain struggles. Now one major factor that, came across, that I came across during this, um, during this uh, homeowner selection process was I came across a certain application whereby, uh, in which there were certain uh, conditions. Uh, there was a family of three, a mother and um, two kids. They were living in a house with uh, three rooms. And, uh, sorry, a family of four, three daughters and one mother, and a house with three rooms. And the point was that the mother did not want uh, the daughters to share a, share a bedroom. And that was a cogent argument for getting the application approved. This got them, the, uh, this got them selected. This got the family selected for home ownership. Now, when I compare it to my country, in my country, uh, people uh, who make who are in the middle range of income, live in, housings with, live in houses with two rooms and their families of four and five. So, so that's a striking difference between India and the USA. So this was a major factor that indicates a difference in quality of life, which has a lot to do with political economy. My learnings from this internship. The struggle is real. I was trying, yeah. So I was trying to uh, push up, I think like two, uh, one or two dressers on this card and that's a truck. So first learning is, Teamwork. Um, I worked with a lot of people who ranged from people who worked at the restore, whose job was to drive and move stuff, and people who made decisions. And uh, working with different teams enabled me to learn what teamwork actually means and what, a, what and how and what a multitude of forms teamworks can take. My next learning was fundraising through alternate sources. So we know about normal fundraising, like you um, set up a GoFundMe page, you have fundraising campaigns, but this is an idea of uh, this is a very innovative idea with uh, Habitat for Humanity. They have this restore, Habitat for Humanity restore, where they collect furniture from dorms and hotels, and then they, um, they, they collect them, they, it's donated stuff, it also comes from many donors, and then they go over these, they sort them out, and then they refurbish and resell them, and then they raise money like this. It doesn't cost them much, but it brings in enough money for them to keep the operations going. My next learning was networking. Um, the caption who let the dogs out. Um, and there's only one dog, if you don't, anyway. Um, so this was at the house of the fund women director, Jennifer Gormley. Uh, she invited in the interns uh, to a cookout, and we ended up talking about opportunities after graduation, where she learned, where she got a degree in international diplomacy. And uh, it happened to be a really nice networking experience. And there were so many points about that uh, experience. Uh, now, Gyanu and Pushpa, you will be able to answer this better. She asked me where? Mount Everest was in India or Nepal, and I was like, ah, okay, now, <laughs> now I can use, so they don't know this in Nepal, but then yeah, that's a major factor. So uh, talking to her about my country and my culture was a good experience, but then it, it, we segued into talking about professional stuff. My next learning, so importance of passion and empathy. So Samantha Van Winkle, whose ceremony I went to, um, this was a letter from her kids to her for the new house, uh, 
calculated letter. So this shows why an entrepreneur needs to be needs to empathize and needs to be passionate about what he or she does because this enables them to connect to people in a better way and know what lies behind people and know the background of people and um, this helps them carry on their work better. So my internship in EPG. Um, how I connect these two? So there was a lot of scope for initiatives in my internship. I could take initiatives, I could um, come up with a project, a suggestion. My supervisors had cohort meetings where they used to take, in, uh, take inputs from us. And that proves to be a really good uh, place to enhance my initi uh, initiation skills. Um, also, another skill I learned, another uh, connecting factor is making a plan of action. So I was required to submit proposals and plans and what I had to do. And that I, that, that's something I learned at EPG, that's something I took from EPG, making a plan of action. When I had meetings with Dr. Hagbird, making a plan of action for the next two and three years. So that's something that connects my internship and EPG directly. Uh, thinking on my feet, so I had to do a lot of research. My research comprised of water quality in homes and why these homes with good water quality uh, could be used as ha by Habitat to advance their housing um, agenda. So they, pe many people think Habitat homes are not as good as other homes in the locality, but that's not true. Habitat homes use uh, the highest quality of material, including plumbing material, and that's what my uh, focus was in this project, which I used to advocate for Habitat homes. So key vocabularies that I leveraged. Raising opportunity. So I recognized that in Kentucky, people may have a, a negative mindset about habitat, and that's why I leveraged that opportunity to uh, submit a, pr an, a presentation to them, which had plans and research from my experience, and that, um, apply, that provided for a plan of action uh, to advocate that habitat homes are at par with other homes in the locality. Advocating change, that we advocated advocating change because I advocated for why habitat homes uh, are not uh, low quality or are as good as other homes. Considering group decisions. So we had, I mentioned we had cohort meetings. In these cohort meetings, we uh, took inputs from everybody and we made decisions. And that's why my role was uh, significant as somebody who facilitated group decisions. Challenges. So coping with the amount of work was a big challenge, um, especially the number of donors. There were so many, there was so much redundancy. We had to go through several names that, rec that kept recurring. And that's why the amount of work was, was uh, heavy. Also, the office staff at Habitat Richmond had, re had changed recently, in the last eight months. So everybody was new, and they had to do a lot of organizing. So the workload was uh, heavy on all the interns, because we took direct action in uh, trying to organize uh, how the office worked. Also, managing my journals along with my research was a, a major time management issue as one of the challenges. Now, what's next? Um, so I want to research into the housing problem in America and across the world and research other welfare programs that government runs that are similar to uh, public housing. And I want to combine my research, my internship, my insights, and my learnings from EPG into a good um, persuasive capstone proposal, uh, which I want to propose in my next or the semester after next semester. Um, to end this, this is the EPG Mafia, cohort 13, uh, in Dr. Hagbert's words. And uh, yeah, again, thanks for all you, thanks for coming and then for helping the presentation, Ishara and Pushpa.